focus. So Katzella sinus half over hypotenuse. So sinus is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is half over adjacent. So the first time we were just doing our ratios, where we set it up, we didn't know anything about our angle measures, but we had all of our sides. The back side is where we had an angle measure, and we used that information to solve for unknown sides. Now, how would I find my other angle in here? Sorry. Okay, we know that angles inside a triangle add to be 180. We also know that these two angles have to add to be 90 because we already have um, that is right. All right, so we were using our sine cosine tangent to solve for unknown values. Um, so I want to go and take a look at letter C over here. So letter C, they give us that our angle is 23 degrees. And we have to solve for x and y. I'm going to go ahead and start off with x. <laughs> Notice that they do give us our sine of 3. Is this my opposite adjacent or hypotenuse? Adjacent. Adjacent, that's yes, my adjacent. So we do know our adjacent. Okay, so when I go to solve for x, is this my opposite or my hypotenuse? Opposite. opposite. All right, so when I go to solve for x, what relates opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So I would have tangent of 23 degrees equals my opposite x over my adjacent. Okay. Over TOA, opposite over adjacent. Now, to solve for x here, I'm currently dividing by 3, so I need to multiply both sides by 3. And I'm literally just punching into my calculator 3 tangent of 23. If we don't have our calculators, if <laughs> we could go through this whole unit and not use calculators, or we just have this be our answer. But we use your calculators to get the exact answer, or a rounded close version of it. We literally just punch this into the calculator. Now, let's take a look at solving for y. Why is my hypotenuse? So what relates my adjacent my hypotenuse? Cosine, good. So I have cosine, we're still using angle 23 degrees, equals my adjacent 3 over my hypotenuse y. So this one's a little different in that my variable is now in the denominator. Um, so I would recommend for this just to cross multiply to solve. So I would have y times cosine of 23 equals 3. And then how do I solve for y here? What do I have to do? What do we do with our cosine 23? Because this is just a number. Divide it. Divide it. We're currently multiplying by cosine 23. The inverse operation would be to divide by it. So we're going to divide both sides by cosine 23, divide by cosine 23. So what I'm punching into my calculator is 3 over cosine 24. Okay, so notice that difference. We're not just always going to be multiplying by that number. If you were to multiply by 3 on both sides here, you'd just have 9 over y. They didn't get rid of your 3. Okay. Uh, so that's what you punch into your calculator. Uh, a couple of things. Sine, cosine, and tangent can never just be written without um, something after it. So what comes, what's inside of our parentheses here, we call this an argument. I can't just have sine without an argument. I can't just say sine equals y over 3. That does not compute. That's like saying square root equals y over 3. Well, square root of what? So we take sine cosine tangent of something. So you should always have something with it here. If you just write sine without a number, you will lose points because it's not exactly correct. Uh, also, too, you cannot divide by just sine. You have to divide by sine of 36 or sine of 36. That's like saying just divide by square root, square root of what? Okay, so there should always be something going along with your sine cosine tangent. Okay. Um, I think I might have made mention of this, but I don't remember, so I'll say it again just in case. Um, if you have to use your, um, you have to use the decimal that you found within your problem, don't use the rounded decimal. Use the full decimal that's on your calculator. My recommendation is that you don't use a decimal if you don't have to. So for example, here with our first one, letter A, I could have technically, instead of doing cosine of 36 equals y over 152, after I found x, I could have done, uh, to find y, I could have done tangent, because we know x. But since that's a rounded decimal, I would not recommend using it. One, you have to write a lot more numbers. And two, this is a rounded value, and you'd have to use the full decimal. Whereas over here, this is the exact value, so you would get a more exact answer. But 
if you have to use a decimal that you found, use the full decimal, not the round one. If you use the round one, you're rounding and then rounding again, and your answer will be off. So you should use a full decimal. <coughs> Okay, one last thing, and then I'm going to have you do some things for more. Um, so here, I just stuck with using 23 degrees. And uh, we could have actually gone ahead and used this angle over here. What would this angle be if this is 23? 60. 60. Now, is it advantageous for us to use that? Not necessarily. Um, but sometimes... Uh, it might be better to use the other angle, um, just because let's say you had this situation where your variable's in the denominator. Sometimes using the other using the other angle allows you to have your variable on top here because my hypotenuse is the variable. There's no way to change it to be on the top. Uh, <coughs> but you can go ahead and use the other angle here. I would be using then um, if I were to do solve for if I were to solve for y here, I would do sine of 60, 70 plus 3 over y. So it's not often you want to use it, but that is an option. Okay, I take it back. There was one more thing I wanted to say. Our properties of proportions allows me to take, so one of our properties said this. If I have this proportion, I can take the whole thing and flip it upside down. So I can say b over a equals d over c. So if you don't like this whole cross multiply that divided by the cosine 23, we could just go ahead, since my variable is in the denominator here, so I'm going to take this part here too. Since my variable is in the denominator, I could go ahead and take the whole proportion and flip it upside down. And when I do that, I would get 1 over cosine of 23 equals y. So then now you're right back to, oh, we just multiply both sides by 3. And then I would know that a little more easily y is 3 over cosine of 25. So really whatever floats your boat. Cross, multiply, and divide, or flip it upside down and multiply. Okay, questions with any of that? Yes. Okay, how about a starting point? <laughs> I'm serious, like, what's an actual question you have? Solving for like x or y is that you're asking about? So you have to use a trig function and it depends on which size you have. Do you have your opposite and adjacent? Opposite and adjacent is going to be your tangent. You need to know your so factor. So you look to see which sides you have. I know my adjacent, so I'm going when I solve for x, that's my opposite. Opposite and adjacent means I use tangent. Instead of your tangent and solve. So if I find my y, that's my hypotenuse. So I have adjacent and hypotenuse. Adjacent to the hypotenuse is cosine, so set up your cosine is solved. So you just have to look to see which two sides do you have. Opposite hypotenuse, adjacent to hypotenuse, or opposite adjacent. <laughs> All right, um, so you guys did that factory for warm up. I want you to now, as I come around to check homework, I want you to go ahead and complete these problems here, so these six problems from your <coughs> from your test class. Um, Ooh, good question. Um, let's go ahead and actually, you can either use the table or do it on the calculator, but I do want the actual uh, decimal value, not just the 3 over cosine 23. I'll grab calculators here in just a moment. Um, guys, for this bottom one, you should be able to find x. Yeah, you're good. Okay, um, so you'll find it later. Raise your hand if you did not bring a calculator today. Let's see. Hey, much better. All right. We need to borrow a calculator. We'll do the same thing as last time. Just go ahead and come grab a calculator and then write your name here on the board. Okay, um, so I had you finishing these prompts from your notes for your extra, extra warm-up. And guys, when you're doing these prompts, always show your setup. I know we can do a lot of math um, in our heads, but always show your setup. So what I mean by that is, for example, number one here, here's my angle, angle 22. And I have my opposite and hypotenuse. So that would be sine of 22 equals opposite 
over hypotenuse. So I'm looking for this f every single time. And then you can just go ahead and punch into your calculator x equals 14 times sine 22. Uh, and then you get your actual answer. What do we get that uh, is 5.2? 9.244? Yeah. Awesome. So every single time I'm looking for your setup and then your answer. If you have no setup, you will not get points for your answer. Okay, so always show your setup there. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and come over here. So this one, I've got opposite hypotenuse. So again, that's going to be sine of 36 equals my opposite over my hypotenuse. Always show your setup. Here I'm going to have to cross multiply to solve. Um, in the end, we end up doing 20 divided by sine of 36. Also, guys, ooh, we can use properties of proportions again in a different way. I didn't even think of this until now. One of our properties of proportions says that I can switch diagonal, right? So if we think of it this way, I could just switch my diagonal here, and that immediately gives me that x over 1 is 20 over sine of 36. That would probably be the fastest way. It should just be x equals 20 over sine of 36. And those properties of proportions are so helpful. Okay, um, so here we should have gotten approximately 34.026. Questions with those two? All right, I see a lot of us on our phones that should not be on our phones. Just going to put those away. Let's go and make sure earbuds are out so that you can all hear my wonderful raspy voice and go with ears out. Right, Aiden? Yeah. Go ahead and think about it. I can always count on you. Go and put it away, Becca. I can still see it. Thank you. Okay, um, so let's take a look over here. I'm going to erase my work from before. All right, so here I've got my adjacent and hypotenuse, so that's going to be cosine of 61 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, that'll be 9 over cosine of 61. And you should have gotten approximately 4.363. And then over here, we already said that it would have been x equals 6 over tangent of 6.8, so that would be approximately 2.424. Do we have any questions on this? Yes. You could also find the second, the third angle in the last one and you could hand it on the For this one here? Yeah. And then just make it nicer so your x is not in the denominator. Yeah, yeah good. So. They'll see the same, hey, we've got this angle here, and that would actually make it nicer to where then my x would be on the numerator. So I'd have tangent of 22 equals x over 6. That makes it a little bit nicer for solving. Very good. Other questions? Sorry. Um, so for the third one, how did you get that? I got 18. This one? Yeah, 4.8. That one? This one? 18. Oh, yeah, I got 18. Did I calculate it wrong? 18. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you know what? No, it's wrong here. What did you guys get? We the debate is at four or three. Four. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, guys, another thing to do to kind of just check to make sure you're going about things correctly, not making a major mistake is that we know our hypotenuse should always be the longest length. So if you get an answer, what was my answer? Oh, yes, my answer would have been bad. So my answer that I got was four point something. My hypotenuse should be my longest. So that should have been a big alert to me that, hey, my hypotenuse is not the longest in this time Okay, so little things like that. Also, too, um, if our side measures, um, well, I guess another thing is that this is not necessarily, this is not a 36 to 90, but it's relatively close to it. So I should know that my hypotenuse should be about double, not quite, but kind of close to double. So if I would have gotten x was like 100, uh, that would have been concerning, okay? So just kind of look back to make sure your numbers seem to make sense with it or um, triangle. Also, too, um, remember your smallest angle is across from your smallest side. Um, and so in a triangle where I have my side across from 22 and my side across from 68, 
22 should be a significant amount smaller than the one across from 68. Or we should see a significant amount. So just little things like that can help. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom. This one's requiring a bit more work. Alright, um, let's see. Here we've got that this is perpendicular. And they tell us my lines are parallel. So what's true about this angle here? Right. It's also right angle. So that's why we were able to find x. What is x going to be? Okay, um, so actually it wasn't too bad to find our w here. You had a couple of options. Um, you should have gotten w is approximately 20.84. You have quite a few ways And you can still find x you know, without knowing that the same angle is an angle. So if you find w first, then you can use like inverse uh, the cosine. Yes, we'll be learning the inverses today, but you're correct. You can use a first strike for that. Okay, and then over here. Um, I would start off by finding my W using my smaller triangle. And so our setup here, we've got our adjacent and our hypotenuse. So that would be tangent of W, uh, tangent of 70. Tangent of 70 equals our opposite over our adjacent. So I'm going to change my locations. W is 16 over tangent of 70. So for W, do we get approximately 5.824? Are we okay with this one? Yeah. Okay. So then for our X, we're going to have to use our big triangle. I cannot use um, the 41 degrees with just X because this is not a right triangle. At least to our knowledge, it's not a right triangle. Um, and in fact, it can't be because then that would make these perpendicular or parallel, and we can't have parallel lines going at the same point. So we have to look at our big triangle. So looking at our big triangle here, because that is still a right triangle. I do know my opposite. I don't know my adjacent. So I'm going to go ahead and use tangent again. Tangent of 41 equals 16 over x plus w. I'm just going to go and call the whole thing y. Right, so then I get y is 16 over tangent of 41, which is approximately. Oh, I didn't write it down. 24.389. Does that sound right? Maybe I'm on the whole page. No? Well, someone punch it. 16 divided by tangent 4, 18.406. Oh, I did it a different way. Whoops. Okay. 18.406. Um, Thank you. Alright, so that was my whole thing. Now, how do I get just the x? Subtract that. So I'm going to take this. I guess this is what I mean by going back to the full decimal. You want to use the full decimal of this and the full decimal of our w. So I'm just going to say x equals y minus u. <laughs> and then, again, use the full decimal there. A couple of things with your calculator. Ooh, this is good to know. Okay. So there are some tricks and trades of our calculator that sometimes students don't know. And this is actually super helpful for us. All right, ignore this. We were finding the volume of a wake on a jet plane earlier today. Okay, um, so when you do 16 divided by a tangent of 70, so again, I want to use this full decimal when I subtract it uh, from my y there. You can actually have your calculator store this value for any letter of the alphabet, um, and that's using this STO button. I'm going to guess you can use that alphabet, the green alpha keys there, or you can actually use X here. X already has a value stored for it. Most likely it's zero, but if uh, someone's used your calculator before you, it might have a value stored in for it. 
So I'm actually just going to go ahead and take this value. I'm going to hit store. And it automatically takes that entire decimal and stores it in for whatever it's helping to. So now whenever I hit X, I get that value. Um, some people like to just go ahead and use the W because that's what we labeled it. So you would do store alpha W. And that way I don't have to retype out that full long decimal for it. So then when I go to do my work here, I hit 16 divided by tangent of 41. And I can just do minus x. And it automatically leaves the whole decimal minus the whole decimal. So it makes it a little bit easier for you. Um, so you can do that on any 83 or 84. If you have the update, you can always go up and highlight and paste those answers. Um, so you could have done 18 minus, and then just go up and highlight and paste that answer. Okay, so little things like that can be helpful for you. All right, so we should have gotten then that x is approximately Okay, what did it say? 582. 582? Yeah. Okay, that score button is actually super, super helpful in later years. Okay, questions with any of those? A lot more practice with that trick. Okay, um, let's take a look at our factoring real quick. All right. Um, I cannot jump straight to my answer because I have that 4 in front, so I need what multiplies to the outside. What's 4 times 15? 16. Multiply to negative 16, add to negative 17. What two numbers are talking about? 20 and negative 20. Negative 20. Negative 20. Negative 20. Negative 20. Ooh. Is it 12 and 5 or 20 and 3? Negative 20 and 3. Negative 20, positive 3? Yeah. Why can't we do negative 12 and negative 5? All right, and what I multiply to be a negative. Okay, so I can't just say x minus 20 or y minus 20, y plus 3. We have to go through and do the full regrouping. So minus 20y plus 3y plus t. Like this. Yeah. I can pull out a 4 or a y. y minus 5. I can pull out a 3. Y plus 5, and we should have gotten y minus 5 times 4y plus 3. Right. We agree? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Just don't forget to back. Okay, um, let's go take a look at our homework, and then we'll turn it into Okay, so what we have for today is now we can learn how to find the angles. So last class we were using trig to find unknown sides. Today we're going to be using trig to find unknown angles. And so what this is called is actually inverse trig. And then we're going to be using this um, also with what's called angles of elevation and angles of depression. Okay, um, so our next class we do have a quiz. So just a reminder, we do have a quiz next class. That's basically just on trig. Last class we did trig, today we're doing more trig, it's inverse trig today. Okay. So, inverse trig, again, it lets us find the missing angles of a triangle. So, remember, we have sine of x is our opposite over our hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of x is our opposite over adjacent. So before we were setting up our ratios, we were plugging in information at our sides and our angle to find our unknown sides. Well now, suppose we want to find our angle. Suppose we don't know this. How do we find this? Well, we know that, um, for example, if I had 2x equals 10, how would I solve for x? What do I do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. The opposite of multiplication, or the inverse operation of multiplication, is division. That gets rid of it. If I had um, x squared equals 4, how would I get x by itself? Square, square, square rooted. Once again, the square root is the inverse operation of squared. It undoes it, so you'd be left with just x equals 5 2. So the question is, how do we undo a sine? How do we undo a cosine? And how do we undo a tangent? This is what's called inverse sine. Inverse cosine inversity. Okay? So suppose we had sine 
of x equals 8 over 10. So that's actually what we have is a triangle here. We don't know x, but we know our opposite is 8 or hypotenuse. So suppose we have this information. Well, how do we undo the sign to get rid of x? We do inverse sign. So technically what we're doing is we're doing inverse sign of both sides, right? We square root both sides. We divide both sides by 2. So technically what we're doing is inverse sign. So it's sine of a little negative 1 for an exponent of both sides. Inverse sign. Okay. So I'm applying inverse sign to both sides. Now, inverse sign and sign cancel each other out, just like square root and square cancel each other out, just like multiplying and dividing cancel each other out. So over here, we're left with just x. And then on our calculator, we would go ahead and actually type in inverse sine of 8 over 10. And when we do, we get approximately, our angle is 53.1 degrees or degrees. Okay, so this is the idea of what we're going to be doing. Now, when we do our inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, you don't have to write this step here over and over again. Instead, you can go from this step to say x equals inverse sine of 8 over 10. Okay? We are taking inverse sine of both sides. You don't have to write this step of actually doing inverse sine of the side. You know it's going to cancel out, so you can go ahead um, and just write that and then calculate it from there. So now, a couple of things with our inverse trait. So we have this for sine, cosine, and tangent. We have inverse cosine of our adjacent over hypotenuse would give us our x. Right? We're doing inverse cosine both sides. I did inverse tangent both sides. I'd have x equals my inverse tangent and my opposite over adjacent. This little negative one is not an exponent. It's in the location of an exponent. It actually just indicates inverse. There's another way to write it, and it's called arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. I believe I've been told that way back when, when the printing press first was founded, um, it you know took a lot of time and money to print every single little character, and so it was faster and cheaper to just do a little negative one rather than saying arc tangent, arc cosine, arc sine. I don't know if that's really true. That's what I heard from someone a few years ago. Um, so this is not an exponent. This is just notation to represent inverse. Okay? So this does not mean 1 over tangent. Okay? That is not, not the same thing. So this just simply means inverse. Okay. So let's locate this on our calculators. On your calculator. Find your sine, cosine, tangent, and look right above those buttons. What do you see? Inverse. The little inverse. We have a little inverse sine, little inverse cosine, little inverse tangent. So you just do second. Okay, so go ahead and just make sure everyone's on the same page. Let's go ahead and do our inverse sine of 8 over 10. Second inverse sine, 8 divided by 10. I can get that approximately 53.13. Again, if you're using your table, because um, you don't have your calculator with you, you would look to see where on your table you get that decimal value of 8 over 10 or 0.8, and then the one that's closest to it. The table cannot give you that exact angle, though, whereas your calculator can give us a much closer Okay, any questions with that? So, again, you're still looking at which sides do I have to know which trig you're going to use. Uh, but now, we're going to be finding our angle. Okay, so let's go ahead and find angle A and B for this one. Let's start off with angle A. Here they've given us all of our sides, so we actually have to find a few options as to what we could do. I personally like whole numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and use my 8 and 10. What relates those two sides? Tangent. It's opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to say tangent of A equals 8 over 10. Again, I always, always, always want to see your setup. I want to see your setup. And then under calculator, we're going to say A equals the inverse tangent of 8 over 10. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I guess we did inverse sign. OK, so go ahead and punch under your calculator. What do you get? Good. So the measure of angle A is approximately 38. Wait, and I think it ends up rounding right, 660. 
Yeah. Now again, we technically could have used any of our trig functions just simply because we have um, all of our sites. Now, how should we find angle B? What do you guys want to do? Okay. We've got some options. Want to do tangent? Okay. So I can do my first tangent again. So my tangent of angle B would be 10 over 8. So angle B is inverse tangent of 10 over 8. And what do we get for the measure of angle B? 51.340. Now we could have gone there a little bit faster. Anyone know what we could have done instead? Um, yeah, that would get us there faster. We can do something else though. What do we know about the angles of the triangle, Dustin? Okay, uh, the two angles out to 90. Great. So once you have this on your calculator, you could have just done 90 minus answer, right? 90 minus what we know, and that would give us our left hand. So you could have done that as well. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at. So same idea there. Look at these two. We're do this first with me, then I'll have you do the next one. All right. Um, again, it's up to you which one you want to use. I'm just going to use angle B. I have opposite adjacent, so I'm going to do tangent. So B equals my opposite 33, or my adjacent 56. Uh, so B equals the inverse tangent of 33 over 56. This is my exact answer if I were to leave it like this. But our decimal value then would be, go put it in your calculator, what do you get? Thirty point five one zero. Oh my god. 30.510. Tired check to see if you did 33 or 56, you might have just mistyped that. Okay. So 30.510. And then, guys, go ahead and try that trick where you just simply do 90 minus that. What do we get for a measure of angle A? 59.4. I hear 4. 897, so 490. Okay. <laughs> Okay, questions on that one? So that's our inverse trig. It's a really small extent of what we did yesterday. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back side actually. We have now what are called angles of elevation and angles of depression. And what these are is going to be, we're going to have to use our trick to solve these. But an angle of elevation is just simply that it's the angle measure from the ground looking up. Our angle of depression is from looking straight, looking down. Okay, now for these, the angle of elevation and angle of depression are congruent. Why? Yes, so what we operate under is if our plane is traveling parallel to the ground, then these are ultimate interior angles, they're going to be congruent. We also operate underneath the assumption, aside from the linear tower piece, that the top of the building is parallel with the ground. And so again, Okay. So this is basically we have a situation where um, something's flying overhead or we're going um, from a cliff, from a building, something like that, where this parallel lines. So our angle of elevation is from the ground looking up. Angle of its, um, depression is from straight looking up. Now sometimes our angle of elevation is not necessarily from the ground looking up, but from looking straight ahead looking up. So you want to be careful with those, like for this example here, if they ask for the height of the plane, we can find this value, but then we'd have to also add to it the guy's little height, right, to get the whole thing. So just be aware of that. It depends upon the problem. Um, are we looking straight up, or is it that we're measuring from the ground up? Okay. So what we can do is use right triangles and our trig to solve for these unknown values. So for example here, it says the angle of elevation for point A to the top of the cliff is 38 degrees. So that means this here is our 38. And point A is 80 feet from the base of the cliff. They ask for the height of our cliff. 
Again, we're going to be operating on uh, the assumption that buildings are perpendicular, that the height is the height is always going to be perpendicular. So that's what gives us our right triangle. Now we have this angle. We're trying to find this height. This is my opposite. And we know our adjacent. What connects our opposite and adjacent? Good, I heard 10, but yes, tangent. Tangent of 38 equals my opposite over adjacent. So now we can go ahead and multiply by x, or sorry, multiply by 80, and we get that x is 80 tangent 38, which is approximately 62.5 here to 8 times here. Okay? So we're just simply using trig. Basically, what this is is another way of saying we're in round time. So we're basically just using our trig to solve these problems. All right. So here it says from the top of the tower, the angle of depression to a stake on the ground is 72 degrees. The top of the tower is 80 feet above ground. How far is the stake from the foot of the tower? So always draw a picture. We've got a tower. Maybe Rapunzel's in this tower. You don't know. She is. Here's her long. <laughs> this is water. You didn't know it. I don't know how the tower is in water. Okay. Here's an island. Well, because there's not going to be an island in water if it's filled at the bottom of the water. Yep, this is Rapunzel's really like, she, I don't know. Okay, um, <laughs> top of the tower, the angle of depression to a stake on the ground. So the ground starts again over here. Here's our fish, now this is ground. Okay, um, the angle of depression to a stake on the ground is 72 degrees. So angle of depression, again, is from that parallel looking down. So here's my stake on the ground. The angle of depression is this here from my parallel looking down. 72 degrees. The top of the tower is 80 feet above ground, so we have that our height here is 80 feet. And it says, how far is the stake from the front of the tower? Okay, so we've got our right triangle here. We have our height is 80, and we're trying to find this value here at us. Now, they did not give us this angle. They gave us an angle outside of our triangle, but we know angle of depression is the same as our angle of elevation. So now we can go and solve. We have our opposite. We need our adjacent. What can its opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So tangent of 72 degrees equals opposite 80 over adjacent x. And solve. I'm going to use that properties and proportions and switch my diagonal there. x is 80 over tangent of 72. And then go ahead and punch in your calculator. What do you guys get? Twenty-five point three nine. Twenty-five point three nine. Two hundred forty-six point two. Okay, I got twenty-five points in there too. Double check that you punched in, and double check that your degrees not right. Okay, um, so did you guys get 25.993? Okay. So 25.993, and what does it say for rounding? How far is the stake on the top from the foot of the tire? Oh, it doesn't say anything rounding, so we're just going to go. Here's Tundra. Oh! Read the directions before the problem. And what's our units? <laughs> it's usually good to make sure you answer the question. So what is x representing? Answer the question. How far is the stake from the foot of the tower? The stake is 25.99 feet from the tower. Okay. All right, number two is an important one. A tree 40 feet high casts a shadow 58 feet long. By the measure of the angle of elevation in the sun. Let's draw a picture. All right, so I've got a tree. Nice nice bushy tree. And it says it casts a shadow 58 feet long. I'm going to draw my shadow over here. All right, if my shadow's over here, where is the sun? Over there, over there. Over there, thank you. Is it right above the tree? No. No. 
not being dragged it's fast trap. Okay, so we've got this. All right. So it's asking for the measure, the angle of elevation of the sun. So we're looking at this guy. We want to Ooh, fast for the angle. And our tree was 40 feet high. So this height here is 40. You'd be surprised every year I've got students that they, they draw their picture like this. Uh, and then they put their numbers in the wrong place because basically they don't know where their shadow is. But your shadows depend on where you draw your sun. Or they draw the sun over here. I like this one. The shadow of the tree. <laughs> so just do it just a quick little check to make sure your sun shadow is all lined up properly. Okay. Uh, so here, once again, we've got opposite and adjacent. We have tangent relates though. So tangent of x equals my opposite over my adjacent. 58. And so now I'm trying to solve for my angle. When we're solving for our angles, so we're doing our inverse. Here's one first side, you're doing regular trig. So I have x is equal to my inverse tangent of 40 over 58. Guys, it is extremely important that you do write that little negative one to indicate inverse. If you wrote tangent of 40 over 58, that would be completely wrong. Inverse. All right, punch out to your calculator. What do we get? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Forty-three. Thirty-five. Point five. Forty-five. Ninety-two. Thirty. John, are you just messing with me, or do we need to? Don't say angles to nearest degree. All right. So it says find angles to nearest degree. So x is approximately thirty-five degrees. Oh, we probably should just said that in seconds. That's okay. Uh, measure the measure. Of angle of elevation of the sun. Okay, questions with that? Yes, um, that you would lose points for not following directions. Also, if you round them, you're not supposed to lose points. So it is really important, guys, now that you have calculators, you're going to get decimals, which means you're going to be distracted without rounding. Make sure you really read these directions. Okay, questions with this? It's really not supposed to be bad. Inverse trig, we just used to find our angles. Um, and then angle elevation and pressure, just simply we have word processing. Okay, go ahead and flip your paper back over. I want you guys to go ahead and solve for your angles for this one and this guy. Just make sure we're on the right track. As always, when you get your answer, check with your shoulder partner. Oh, yeah, I'm sure for example two. Example two and then the non number. Oh, so no one cares about that.
right, we should have gotten, for example, to measure of angle A is 19.928. He was 70.022. And then for our other problem, A was 50.194 and he was 39.806. Do you have questions on these? Any of these that we can see the set? Okay. Dave. Uh, the example one. Okay, so let's take a look at what you did for angle A. Which trait did you use? Tangent. Okay. So tangent of A equals 4.1 over 12. Is that what you had? Okay. So you got to be careful. Which side is my 12? Hypotenuse. So think back to side, cosine, tangent, so katoa. What relates the opposite of hypotenuse? Sine. sine. Good. So we want to do sine. So that's probably what we got you there. It is a lot of brain power, yes. And I know, especially on a Thursday afternoon, brain power is running low. I'm with you. Other questions that we have on these? Yes. Okay, so for A, which trick did you use? Which trick? Cosine? Okay, so you said cosine of A was 5 over 6? Okay. Now, when we take a look at this, uh, five degrees are adjacent, but six is my uh, opposite. So you have to do tangent of A is equal to opposite. This is the Other questions on these ones? Okay. Alright, so reminder again, next class we do have a quiz over trig inverse trig with angles of elevation depression. Okay, what's your homework for tonight? What worksheet is it? Worksheet four and five. Now, unfortunately, I do not have that printed off for you, so you're just going to have to go on Blackboard. You are welcome to print it off, guys. You don't have to print it off. You can just write on notebook paper like you would for a textbook. Worksheet four and five. Worksheet four was the front and five was the back. Okay, so you have textbook and this homework. Again, just get this from Blackboard. You don't have to print it off. You can if you so desire. Great to see you on the and then next class we do have a quiz. We'll go over homework questions, and then we have our quiz and review here. Yeah, so you need to go on Blackboard. I don't have to if you borrowed a calculator, please to return it and erase your name. And hopefully, you don't have to come tomorrow. Hopefully, I don't have to come tomorrow. Regardless, Tara's going to have a great day. Um, um.